أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى والدين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون صدق الله العظيم رب الشرح لصدري ويسر لأمري وهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Respected viewers and listeners السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من حمزه ونفخه ونفثه أعوذ بكلمات الله التامة من كل شيطان وحامة ومن كل عين لامة أعوذ بكلمات الله التامة من شر ما خلق ربي أعوذ بك من حمزات الشياطين وأعوذ بك ربي أن يحضرون فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين آمين يا رب العالمين حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل قدر الله وما شاء فعال فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان وقل الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا Respected viewers and listeners The ayah which I have read in the beginning was from surah as-saf chapter 61 verse number 9 huwa alladhi arsala rasul rasuluhu bil huda it is he who sends down his messengers with guidance with din al haq with the religion of truth li yuzhirahu ala al-din kullihi the truth which is supposed to be meant to bulldoze all other isms walau kari al mushrikun how much the mushrik these idol worshipers may detest it chapter 61 verse number 9 allah says that it is he who sends down his messengers with guidance with the religion of truth so that religion will bulldoze and supersede all other way of life how much the kuffar will detest it in another place allah says walau karil kafirun how much the disbelievers will detest it the supremacy of islam will come to all of the world this supremacy how much kuffar will detest it it will happen either with your help or without your help wa kafa billahi shahida and allah is enough to witness to this fact that this thing will happen soon today's topic is is a kind of an addendum or continuation of the yesterday's one if you remember if you watched my video according to the timeline yesterday i made a lecture on communism capitalism and islam Today I am going to discuss about the factors of capitalistic society only capitalism and with some kind of connection with islamic eschatology you have to understand what capitalism means you see most of us we are not aware of the monetary system the economic the dynamics of economics we don't know we are unaware or rather i call we are ignorant because we are busy in many other things in our lives the business books which we are studying in universities or in high school those business books are based on capitalism the philosophy of adam smith and this is all expounding and enunciation or elaboration of those fundamental principles so there will be always a missing data and that data you will never be able to know why because this is under the umbrella of jewish banking system you are just the mouthpiece or a puppet to run this but you will never be able to understand the dynamics of all this monetary system because it has so many toggles that it is very hard to untoggle each of that wiring or each that of you know connections it's just like a mind map if you have a mind map of thousands of millions of neurons 
How are you going to, you know, dissect or try to open each of them? You can't. So what happens? You just keep ignoring it and just following the system and become the part of the system. You see, in English, we have a saying that if you do not understand anything or something, just get rid of it. You don't need to, you're not obliged to just understand everything in this world. Who has a time in this rat race game? So you have to move on. So let's move on. But sometimes the curiosity haunts you. You see, if you have inquisitive mind and curiosity or curious mind, you have to see, you have to ponder. And we Muslims are supposed to be like this. Unfortunately, we are the victim of this modern education system, which I'm not saying that don't study. Please don't take me wrong. Read everything in the name of Allah. Iqra bi ismi rabbika lazi khalaq, khalaq al insana min alaq. Read in thy name of your Lord who has created you from the blood clot or congealed blood of clot. You have to study every philosophy under the glasses of Quran. Then your behavior will come right. Otherwise, you will be the victim at the end of maybe atheism, agnosticism or skepticism. And you know that what happens at the end. You will start believing on the physical things more than super, more than metaphysical things. The things which you can see, abstract, these concrete nouns, you will go into that. And then the thing which are abstract, you will ignore it. Because this is the scheme or schemata of this all things. So I'm going to educate you what capitalism is and how Islam is compatible with it. You see, you have to understand what's the meaning of capital. Capital in English means something money or resource of something related which can boost or which can start a business or any kind of sources which are your money or capital. This is capital. Capitalism is the philosophy or rather I can say a political economics where the system of Western democracy supports that. And this system is now so much spread like a web of a spider that you cannot get rid of it. And the basic principle, the mechanism or the cogwheel gear of this whole system is interest. Usury. Is it a commercial interest or a capital? Whatsoever the interest is there. This mechanism collapse, collapses if you remove the interest. You can never run it. How hard you say, how flowery statements you keep making it. No, there's no riba, there's no, but there is. There is if you really do micro analysis. Capitalism. Advantages and disadvantages I'm going to discuss. Remember one thing. No other system will ever prevail other than Qur'an's. The blueprint which was laid by Umar ibn al-Khattab was the physical implementation to run the state craft. You see Muhammad Arabi sallam, he is the final prophet final messenger, no prophet and Nabi or and whatsoever will come after him till doomsday. So Quran is the last supreme source, which we call it revealed knowledge for the humanity. That O Muhammad peace be upon him, we have not sent you to the particular Arabs. The Arabs word I'm putting it to make explanation to the Western world. So I have not sent you the particular, but a mercy for all of the worlds, all of the worlds, worlds with plural. So this is the stature of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So Quran is for everyone. Wherever you see in the Quran, it addresses, Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, O mankind. And when Quran discuss about other prophets like Moses, so he says, Ya qawmana, O my people. But when Prophet Muhammad says something addressing, which Allah is telling to address, like Qul say, he's always addressing to the masses, Nas, Nas, Bani Adam, the children of Adam, peace be upon him. This is the sublime beauty and 
the behavior of Quran because Quran is for everyone. Previous prophets were only sent for the particular nation at their times. So if the Quran is the ultimate and the final source from God, it must answer every problems. It has to be. And Alhamdulillah, Quran and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the best example. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْفَةٌ حَسَنًا The best example and for you, O humanity, you will find indeed in the stature of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the stature, in his personality, the best example to follow for the whole of the world. So everyone in the West, they are following Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, either by knowing, knowingly or unknowingly. You see, that is what Ulama Iqbal said. That Prophet his majesty is so sublime that the Western civilization, they are following him either subconsciously or consciously. But they are following every good morality, sobrieties and pieties you see is basically the extraction of the biography of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Unfortunately, we don't know. That is why this uh, George Bernard Shaw in 1850s, the Royal Albert Hall, he said it. The religion which is going to conquer England, nay Europe, within 100 years is Islam. The reason is because they see the foresight. They, have, they, have, they were foresighted people. They were not like, you know, these biased wasps, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Capitalism. What are the benefits? The thing which is compatible with Islam is that in capitalistic society, you have a freedom of free market. You can make your own businesses, terminologies you will find many of them. Like for example, entrepreneurs, you can start ups like you when you want to start a business, you are an entrepreneur. And the one who is running in the business as the manager is intrapreneur. So these terminology you will see in advanced microanalysis of businesses, ethics. We have no exception for that. These terminologies does not affect anyone unless, uh, unless the principle uh, is right. Islamic system is very clear. You should have a free market, but all the things that you do in business must be following the parameters of Islam. Who laid the parameters? Four guided caliphates. At the time of Umar radiyallahu anhu, he was passing by somewhere and there was a guy, he opened his shop for, for some, you know, stalls, koisks, we call them stalls. And he came to him and said, that, that, did you read the principles of Islam in business? The guy said, no. He said, close your shop and go and read it. Because in the Quran, Allah says that many of you people will come and say that riba is like a business. Huh? Interest is like a business or rather you can say another way either. Sorry, you can say other way that, you know, without interest, we cannot have a business. You know, you find these people, goldsmiths, most of them, when they do business, you ask them. They say, no, actually, basically, this is, this is the type. This is a system. There's no other way. Yes, we are knowing there's no other way because you're following the Western democratic capitalism. That is why you don't know. And you are right because Prophet says, the time will come to you that you will not be able to escape from riba. If you want to escape, the smoke will come and catch you. He says, all these four people are equally penalized on the day of judgment. The one who sees the riba, the one who writes the riba, the one who takes the riba and the one who gives, indulges. All these four, the, the person who writes, the person who sees, the person who gives and the person who takes, all are equal in the day of judgment on the dock for the trial to be penalized as the interest. So think about it. People say, oh, we don't take directly, but you're looking at it. You're looking that your system is supporting that. So you're equal. So Prophet said, the time will come to you that you will not escape. And we are living exactly today in that era. How hard you try, you are unable to escape yourself. Somehow by the hook or by the crook, you have to take riba. 
and beautifully they change the names this is this this is that this is this this is that umar ibn al khattab radiyallahu anhu one of the sahaba they ask riba he said umar ibn umar ibn al khattab radiyallahu anhu he said that riba is not allowed not permissible and riba is not permissible if i'm not if i'm not wrong he he used this word you can check this then one of the of course uh, disciple of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at his time he asked umar ibn al khattab that what do you mean by Uh, riba with the longer uh, vowel sound he said riba is the fear that comes in your heart that this could be a riba can you imagine so if you have a slight doubt that this transaction maybe it has some kind of riba it's not allowed according to fatwa e faruqi umar ibn al khattab radiyallahu anhu and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that follow my four guided caliphates they are like stars they are stars to you you have to follow them the time will come to you follow them so whatever they say they could not speak from from their own desires they must be from the extraction of analogical induction and deduction of prophet muhammad peace be upon him there's no other way they can never do ijtihad by their own their ijtihad are so pure I'm talking about four guided caliphates that it must be coming from Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So free market system you have it in capitalism. All the things which goes parallelly in Islam is okay, but where the problem comes? This problem comes when you have interest in everywhere. Interest is the biggest problem which is making you go into famine according to the hadith of prophet muhammad peace be upon him mamin qaumin yazharu fihim arriba any nation who makes it straight craft on the grounds of usury in trust illa ukhizu bi sanati the nation will go into hunger and strife wa mamin qaumin yazharu fihim ar rishar Rusha, and the nation, whosoever any nation who takes or makes his uh, state crafting structure on the grounds of bribery, despotism, cronyism, nepotism, that nation will become a timid, terrified, and petrified. This is the hadith of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. so capitalism so far so good going right but in trust because of this interest system you cannot escape yourself paper currency what value the paper currency has is just like a piece of a paper intrinsic value there is an employer and employee relationship and in that employer employee relationship there is a system which umar ibn al khattab laid it but we don't know we call it prp performance related pay the guy is working let's suppose he's making a pillow he's working and working and working what criterion do we have to evaluate that what is the optimal pay or a wage should be given to that employee from the employer what is the scale what is the criterion we have nothing might is right capitalistic crocodile will say i will pay you only this amount cheap labor but umar radiyallahu anhu says no you cannot why because you have to see the performance related pay how much he performed give him relative pay if you are not doing it it's wrong then you are just doing maisiru there is are some of nowadays in capitalist society we have these you know bureaucracy he is who who is he he is ceo who is he he is the general president who is he he is the general manager mm -hmm. good luck but you see the guy is doing nothing sitting in the office maisiru he is signing and taking 75% of this this all money capital as as a dividends from the company and the and then the rest of the people you know sharing getting their share share in a sense that wages because there are some kind of uh, stakeholders and they're getting what nothing so who is sweating more 
the, the people who are in the lower range, they are sweating more. And that is why the communism was, you know, intervening with capitalism. I don't want to go into that because they said this is not justice. And they are true. Why? Because you see, there is no control. So what happens? Because of this gap and a difference of high salaries and low salaries, the one who is on the high salary, he's going to keep putting his money in the bank, bank and the bank will multiply, double it, double it, putting more interest, making to make more milking. He's becoming rich and rich. So rich will become richer and richer and the poor will become poorer and poorer. And then you have the society which has a gulf of difference between rich and poor and mediocres will only strive and struggle. And poor, what happens? You know that what happens to poor. Prophet says that fakr will even lead you to kufr. If you are so much fakr, poor powers, very poor person, what happens? There is a chance that you will indulge into kufr. You will say to Allah, oh Allah, you have not given me anything. Kufr. Wala taqratu min rahmatillah. Don't be despondent from the mercy of Allah and you will. So it's bad. Shah Waliullah Dehlvi, Rahmatullah Alayhi, he said, if the money is not divided justly into the society, two kind of people or societies will born. One will be so much rich, they will forget Allah because of their riches. And the other society will be so much poor, they will forget Allah because of their faqr, famine. So this is so dangerous and this is what happens in capitalistic society. Can you believe it? How many people are there in the rich people in the world? Bill Gates, Jeff, uh, Jeff Bezos, then Elon Musk. $165 billion net prof, sorry, net worth you have. $165 billion. The poor countries don't even have economy and one person is enjoying this. If you divide the wealth of whole rich people into every man, so every man can get up to thirty-five thousand to forty thousand dollars. If you if you split all the money into the world, now this is the problem of capitalistic society. Money is not being distributed justly. The exploiter will take the full advantage from the victims and exploited ones, because he knows that you are peasants, you are lower than me, and he's so rich. And he is the only person you will see in democracy. Western democratic system is based on the dictators of capitalists. Those people will only come again and again, again and again. You will never see a normal person from the normal family and he became the president or prime minister. You will never see. He must be rich. He must have some assets before he come. This is not Islam. I'm just telling you what is there, what is not, should not be there. Then, interest, banking system, all you have investment after investment after investment. Rich will become so rich, poor will become so poor. Now, what is the solution? Islamic zakat, one word. Why the West is afraid of Islam? They are not afraid of your rites and rituals and the Maulana Sahib with the big beard and having a rosary in their hand and talking about love, love, come, come to Allah, come to Allah. They don't care. We have plenty of things happening in the West. You have mosques. They even remove the churches, synagogues to give you people hospitality. Come and bake, make mosques five times, no problem. The problem comes when somebody proposes the Islamic system of social, economic, economic, econ econ economics, and the last one is uh, political. When they show the political or social, political, economic system of Islam, here is the confrontation. The altercation will come when you propose these theories. So let's suppose if we implement the Islamic economic system, number one sledgehammer will come pay the zakat 2.5% of ratio from your assets of 85 grams of gold, intrinsic value whatsoever in the currency and liquid businesses. You have these kind of amount per year for per lunar calendar. You have to pay zakat by the hook or by the crook. It's not your privilege or something like your people are being, please sir, give us your zakat. No, it will be taken by force. From the Hakim-e-Wakt, 
whosoever the current ruler of your nation. This money will go to the Baitul Mal. You can call it treasury of Islam. And that then this money will be spread and distributed among the poor. And that there will be whole transparency goes. In capitalistic society, everything is opaque. Opaque. And something translucent. Islam says neither opaque will work, nor uh, translucent will work, only transparency will work. Everything must be transparent. So no opaqueness, no translucent, translucency, only transparency. If you have that stuff, welcome. And that is why one button on the shirt of Umar ibn al-Khattab, a Bedouin asked Umar, where did you get this button from? And he had to reply. He didn't say that, arrest this guy, how dare he spoke against me. Arrest him. No, this is not Islam. Islam when comes, the biggest thing in Islamic principles are social justice. 300 years humanity is just going left or right, west and east to get to social justice. So my final verdict, 2.5 implemented, all the monetary system, transparency, everybody will account for his work. What did he do? Where did he earn money from? And the last but not the least, all the capitalism, all the system internally and externally will be controlled. So Islam will go only for external and internal control capital management. What we have in capitalistic society under the Western democratic system, internal and external, uncontrolled capital management. You don't know where this money come from, going where. Don't ask, sign the contract, get your benefit like a milking cow and go home. This is not Islam. Every currency, every money, every single thing, you are accountable on the Yom al Akhirah. Where did you spend it? Some people say, oh, it's okay, you know, we should not think too much. Yes, you are right. You should not think too much because you are a stupid dumbass. Sorry to say. That's why you are a puppet. You are a slave to money. That's, you know, Frenchman says, money is my God and woman is my guide. This is what's happening with you. If you really have guts, if you really have guts to know what are you, where are you standing in the limb breath, in the puzzle, what's your identity, then you will stand and speak like a lion. And this is all. You see, my main purpose is here to educate our young generation that you should know that Islam has the best solution in all fields. All fields. It is a matter of time that we should educate to the Western. Tell them we have a better, not better, we have the best system. Please come and talk to us and try to prove us wrong.